reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the first day of the week, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb early in the morning while it was still dark and saw the stone removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and told them, they have taken the Lord from the tomb and we don't know where they put him. So Peter and the other disciple went out and came to the tomb. They both ran, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and arrived at the tomb first. He bent down and saw the burial cloths there, but did not go in. When Simon Peter arrived after him, he went into the tomb and saw the burial cloths there and the cloth that had covered his head. Not with the burial cloths, but rolled up in a separate place. Then the other disciple also went in, the one who had arrived at the tomb first and he saw and believed. For they did not yet understand the scripture that he had to rise from the dead. The gospel of the Lord. Praise Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Come Holy Ghost, creator of Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. <clears throat> One of the most vivid memories of my childhood is of my mother leaving for the United States and me not wanting to say goodbye to her, but rather pleading with her, holding on to her, saying, Please do not leave me behind. Don't leave me behind, I pleaded with her. I will come back, she said. I will be back. As she took my hands off of her waist as I was holding on to her, saying, let go of me. I have to go, but I will be back. I will come back for you. I will be back. She left. And I am from a region of Poland surrounded by mountains. And all that was left in my mind was the imprint of the car that took my mom up the road to the train station that would take her to the airport to the United States. From then on, it was pain and more pain as I waited for my mom to come back. I would wait there at the bottom of the road, looking up the hill, hoping for my mom to come back, as that was the road that took her car to the train station. I would spend my days waiting there for her. I would wait there alone until a tragedy happened in our town where the mother of five children died suddenly after being kicked by a horse 
and experiencing internal bleeding. In our town, the road leading to the cemetery is the same road leading out of the town to the train station. And they took the mother of these five children in a casket up the same road to the cemetery. And so one day as I'm waiting there at the bottom of the road, I notice Yashu, the same age as me, one of the five children of that mother, there at the bottom of the road as well, looking up. And so I asked him, what are you doing here? He said, I'm waiting for my mom to come back. As he looked up at the road leading to the cemetery where they took his mom to be buried. They took his mom up the same road that my mom left for the United States. And so we both stood there at the bottom of the road. And so I looked at him, grabbing him by his hand, and I said, well, then let's wait together. Let's wait together. And from that day on, we both would wait there at the bottom of the road hoping for our moms to come back for us, waiting and hoping together. You too are waiting and hoping just as I did and as Yashu did. But just as I didn't wait alone, neither do you wait alone. You are here. Today, on this Easter Sunday, we are waiting together. You are not walking alone and not waiting alone in whatever situation you are hoping and waiting for. Just as I waited there with Yashu at the bottom of the road, I am now here to wait with you. And just like Yashu came to accompany me in my wait, so too you have come to accompany me. We are waiting together. So if you are waiting for your marriage to get better, or your health to get better, or your children to get better, or your economic situation to get better, because you can't pay your bills, or if you are waiting for the depression to end, or the anxiety to end, or the suicidal thoughts to end, or for the addiction that you have to leave you, or for the cancer to be over, whatever situation you are waiting for right now. I am here today to declare to you today that you are not waiting alone. We are waiting together, for you never walk alone and you never wait alone in this life, in whatever situation you are in, that you are hoping and waiting for to be over looking up that road we are looking up together and let me quote psalm 121 i lift up my eyes to the mountains where does my help come from my help comes from the lord the maker of heaven and earth Psalm 121. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. He, indeed, he who watches over Israel, and we are Israel, the people of God, will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going both now and forevermore. God is with you. My mom said to me when I was a kid in Poland, she said, I will come back for you. 
I will come back, let go of me. I have to leave now, but I will be back. One day, you know, as I went there to the bottom of the hill to look up the road to wait for my mom to come back, Yashu, he, the boy that waited there whose mom had died, he didn't show up. He didn't come. So I asked him the next day, Yashu, why didn't you come to wait with me yesterday? And he says, I don't have to wait anymore. That's why I didn't come. My mom has come back. Yesterday in my dream, she came back and she told me I don't have to wait there anymore, that she is with me wherever I'm at. My mom came back, he said. She is with me wherever I am at. His mom came back for him. And you know what? One of the happiest days of my life was when my mom came back after years of being here in the United States. She came back. And I didn't want to let go of her. She came back. And the very first words I said to her were, You came back. You came back. To this, to, these, to this day, these are the most comforting and joyous words for me. You came back. You know, I wonder on that first Easter morning if those first disciples of Jesus didn't whisper the very same words under their breath when they saw Jesus. You came back. And let's remember, nobody really expected the resurrection and nothing in this life could have prepared these disciples what they encountered that morning. The gospel simply tells us that they didn't understand what rising from the dead meant. That's why the Bible says they were puzzled. They didn't expect an empty tomb. They didn't expect Jesus to come back. But from the beginning, God has made it clear in the Bible, in our salvation history, that God always comes back every time. Every time human beings are convinced because of life's circumstances that God has abandoned them. And maybe that is you right now in whatever situation you are facing in your life. Maybe you have been convinced that God has abandoned you. Every time that human beings were convinced that God had abandoned them to the power of death and suffering, guess what happens? God comes back. And God comes back to give life. Let's do a little recap here. When Adam and Eve found themselves hiding behind the trees because they were naked, okay, because of their disobedience to God, guess what happens? God comes back and assures them that God has not given up on the human family and will redeem us and keep his promise and one day send us a savior. And that savior is Jesus Christ who today has risen from the dead and God has come back for you because he doesn't want to live without you. Hmm? So much does God love you that he came back for you because God always keeps his promises. And when humanity's evil brought about the great flood, you know, Noah and the ark, huh? and his family were stuck there with all the smelly animals, and they began to lose hope for a future, God came back and gave them a chance to start over because God always comes back. And when the people of Israel were slaves in Egypt and began to lose hope that they would ever be free or that God would ever help them, a man named Moses had his afternoon interrupted by a burning bush and God came back and Pharaoh set the people free. And when the nation of Israel collapsed under their own immorality and other nations came and dragged them off to learn new languages and new cultures and new religions and the people of God felt abandoned and felt left behind, what did God do? God came back because God always comes back and in this little corner of the Roman Empire, as we know it as the Holy Land today, God's people under Roman oppression cried out wondering, has God left us behind? God came back and the Virgin Mary heard an angel's message and gave birth to a son. God has come back in Jesus. 
because God always comes back. Throughout the life and ministry of Jesus, our Savior always showed us that God always comes back. And God comes to bring us life and life in abundance. Joy, complete joy. Every action of Jesus is there to prepare us for the empty tomb in the person God comes back to unravel life. The poor and the powerless to the sinner, to the sick, to the depressed, to the hopeless, to the anxious, to the fearful, to the hungry and the oppressed, to the lepers and to the lowly, he comes back. You know, someday I am hoping and I am praying that we will actually live joyfully with Alleluia as our song, as, we, as if we actually believed this good news and trusted that God is always in the resurrection business, that he has been from the beginning. And once you see this, you have to ask yourself, how could the tomb be anything other than empty? God did with Jesus what God wants to do with you every day. Because Easter is not just history, it is mystery. Easter is not just history, it is mystery that you and I are asked to share every day with those around us who find themselves hopeless, without hope, without fuel, without gas. A lot of people around without gas right now, okay? Without fuel to keep going. Mm -hmm. We are an Easter people. And Alleluia is our song. And we are called to share this with the fearful people around us and to remind ourselves when we feel due to the darkness around us, the war around us, all that brings us down around us, when we feel that we have been left behind, that we are not left behind, that God has come back for us, that God always comes back. And in Jesus, God is with you. And you know what? What's my favorite phrase from the Bible? If God is with me, who can be against me? Huh? If God is for you, who can be against you? Yashu's mom came back. My mom came back. And you know what? Your mom has come back too. Your mama has come back for you. Because mm -hmm. God is not just our daddy. God is also our mother. He has come back. You haven't been left behind Jesus is with you. That's what we celebrate today. The power of Jesus is with you. All will be well. And this should make you shout today from the rooftop. Alleluia. He is risen. He is with me. So whenever you and I stand weeping at the darkened tombs of our life, and so many of us do, whenever you and I feel beaten down by the death of our loved ones, or the betrayal of someone close to us, or the depression or anxiety or this or that problem or the news around us, or when you find yourself in grief because of this or that situation, whenever you find yourself in a state of loss or pain, whenever you feel powerless or abandoned, whenever you find yourself in darkness, don't curse the darkness, but look at the light that stands in the middle of our celebration. Don't curse the darkness, but ignite a light. And that light is Jesus Christ who has come back for you because he doesn't want to live without you. And you go out and be that light to those around you. Jesus says, I am the light of the world. And you are the light of the world. Don't light the light and hide it under a bushel basket. But let your light shine to all those around you that they may see your good works and glorify my heavenly Father. Light that light. You know, I was touched this past week in speaking to a man who now goes to Alcoholics Anonymous, and he said, Father, you know, all I heard for a very long time was people telling me, once a drunk, always a drunk. You know how people say that. Huh? Always a drunk, once a drunk, always a drunk, he said, people would tell me. So I kept drinking and didn't believe in myself. Until one day, one of my co-workers, a Christian, who knew of my addiction to alcohol, handed me a note saying, 
I was a drunk too, and I found a way to be sober with God's help in AA. Let me know when you are ready. God never gives up on anyone, and God will never give up on you. God never wants you to give up either on any of those around you. And you know what else? God hasn't just given up on you. God has not given up on your children, or your grandchildren, or your spouse, or anyone around you. And you should never give up on them either. Because God never gives up. God always comes back. Always, always, always comes back. And in Jesus, God has come back for you and for me and for all those around you and around me. And this is surely good news that I know you can use. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Happy Easter. Happy Easter. Amen. And that's the sermon for Easter 2022. <laughs> Did you all pay attention throughout? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah? yeah. Oh, that's good. <laughs> you know, I've been doing a lot of masses over these days, so I had to, you know, read as much as I could because I'm a little sleepy. <laughs> but I'm glad everybody is here. Thank you so much for coming, as always. Have a happy, happy Easter. And just know that this is the day when we celebrate that God has come back for us. Mm -hmm. The tomb is empty. So whatever tomb you are in, whatever tomb that may be, throw away the stone and come out of that tomb. That's what I'm trying to live right now. You know, the tomb is empty. Roll away the stone. The stone needs to be rolled away. And you got to get out of that tomb and live. Mm -hmm. So if you're in grief, or whatever it is that you find yourself in, wherever, huh? come out of that cave okay. and into the resurrected life. Yes. Jesus wants you to live. He says, as I live, I want you to live. He doesn't just want you to exist. How sorry is that if you just exist? He says, I've come that you may have life and have it in abundance. John 10.10. 10. John 15.1. What does it say? I've come to give you joy and that my joy may be complete in you. And if you read the Bible, you'd know it. Hmm? 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 So we got to live, roll away any stone that may have been, in, that we may be, you know, that may be keeping us in and come out of that, that cave, out of the tomb. The dead people are not, the, not those who die. They are the real living. The dead are the spiritually dead here. A lot of people walking around, moving their legs, but they dead inside. Huh? Hmm? What? A lot of people here moving their legs. Isn't that true? A lot of people moving their legs, but they dead inside. Huh? That's my southern accent coming out. Okay. Do you all know that I'm from the south? Did you know that? From the south of Poland. Oh. <laughs> now you know. <laughs> So have a happy Easter. Keep smiling. Everything is good in life. God is with us. It will all be well. I'm so happy to see so many of you here making it for Easter uh, Mass today. Thank you so very much. And uh, I'm, I'm so happy you're here. Thank you for that. Have a happy, happy Easter celebration with all those uh, in your family and friends. Next weekend, we begin... Divine Mercy Weekend, and I highly recommend that you place this on your calendar. Our parish mission begins on Sunday, April 24th, next Sunday. We have a mission speaker, a renowned speaker coming here. I've had him in other parishes before. And we will have a concert and an inspirational talk next Sunday from 7 to 8 in the evening and for three days. It's a time of spiritual renewal, Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday, all in English, okay? I don't wanna hear any more complaints. Oh, you do everything in Spanish. This is in English, okay? It's in English. So 
So you know what? This is in English. That means everybody's showing up. Okay? It's in English. Uh, Sunday from 7 to 8, and Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday from 7 to 8. Those three days, the talks, he's not boring. He's actually really funny, very inspirational. You'll be touched. He has powerful stories, you know, things to renew you. So you want to make sure you come for that. And this is not just for Catholics, it's for everybody. So invite people. Maybe you can, you know, entice your kids in some way, you know, say to them, um, um, I'll take you out or something. You know, for them to <laughs> you know, yeah, whatever, you know, get them here. It'll be good. Okay, so place that on your calendars. And thank you so much, as always, for coming. I don't take any of you for granted. I hope you know that, right? You know, yeah. Everybody here is needed and special, and I'm very happy that you come as we walk together. Because you being here makes me know and feel that I don't walk alone. And you coming here lets you know that you don't walk alone. Hmm? And that it'll all be fine, right? right. <laughs> Just keep walking. That's actually what you know, Christianity is. Christianity from the beginning was not known as Christianity. It was known as the way. Have you heard of the Camino de Santiago? You know, the, the Martin Sheen movie and all of that? The way? Okay, that's where they get it from. Because Christianity was... Uh, called the way because we're on the way we ain't there yet you know, we walk, we keep walking huh? but we don't walk alone Jesus walks with us and we know that Jesus walks with us when Jesus walks with us in his body and his body is you hmm? individually and collectively the Bible says we are the body of Christ in the temples of the Holy Spirit did you know that? No? Well, now you do. <laughs> okay. 